All right, welcome back. Um, today, we're going to be going over graphing for RBTs. Hey, this is a very highly requested topic because um, it's going to, going to apply to the RBT exam, um, the RBT competency assessment, and uh, just being an RBT in general. So important that you know it, but not as hard as you think. As always, if you're studying for the RBT exam, okay, um, check out our study materials, check out my website, check out my other videos. If you're enjoying my videos, um, please like and subscribe. It really helps me. Um, any questions you have, email me, leave a comment below. Um, I'm happy to help you, happy to answer them. Other than that, let's get into graphing. So first things first, um, components of a line graph, okay? On the RBT exam, they might ask you, what is the most common form of graph in ABA? And the answer to that question is a line graph. As an RBT, you're going to be working with line graphs, okay, 99% of the time. And this is what it looks like, all right? So what do you need? You need your x-axis, okay, which is down here. That's your time, right? So in this case, um, each number on the x-axis represents one three-hour session, okay? But that can be hours, it can be days, it can be sessions. Um, it can be any time okay, where you're recording data. You wanna see how the data is changing over time, and that's your x-axis. Your y-axis is your behavior, okay? What are you tracking? In this case, we're tracking um, screaming, okay? But you can also track skill acquisition. So we'll see later, as we look at a matching graph, okay, what does it look like when you're tracking skills? And that's where your y-axis goes, right? So if you're looking at this graph, um, the first session, screaming happened twice. Second, third session, screaming happened twice, okay? You need your title, which is up here, the rate of client screaming. You need your data points, okay, which are these little, little dots. You need your data path, okay? Connect those dots, right? So you have your little line, hence a line graph, okay? It's showing you all the the uh, trends and the variabilities and the levels of the data, which we're about to go over. And then you have your change line, okay? This can be a condition change line or a phase change line. Um, that's not too important as an RBT. Um, just know in this instance, okay, for an RBT, this line is typically going to mean a change from baseline to intervention, okay? So in this case, if our intervention is sessions four, five, six, and seven, this line indicates that sessions one, two, and three were baseline. Baseline data is data taken before intervention starts. And that's what this graph is representing, okay? So those are your components, right? That doesn't change. All that changes, okay, is what you're measuring, um, what time you're using, and then how your data looks, okay? So very straightforward. Um, don't miss these questions on the exam. Okay, understand what goes on each and what you need to include, okay? All right, so what about reading a graph? Okay, well, in, re in, in ABA, it's con we consider it visual analysis, okay? Because when you're interpreting graphs in ABA, you're going to be doing it visually. You're going to look at the graph and interpret it. That's why we call it visual analysis, okay? So it's an RBT, there's gonna be three things um, you're typically looking at, right, as you're helping read a graph or if you need to read a graph, okay? The first thing you want to look at is trend, okay? The trend of the data. What way is the data moving? What way is the, da uh, what way is the behavior changing, okay? Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Or is there no trend, all right? So if you look at the top graph, okay, you see it's clearly an increasing trend, right? We start down here at two, it kind of moves up to three, it stays flat, jumps up to five, jumps up to six, jumps to eight, okay? And then a slight decrease at seven. But overall, and that's what we're looking at, the overall picture, okay? What has the data done? What is the trend? We are looking at an increasing trend, okay, in this behavior. Now, what about no trend, right? That's our middle graph, okay? You have data point two, okay, three, back to two, back to three. Okay, it's just hopping back and forth. There's no clear trend, right? The behavior looks relatively stable, okay? Not much change, not much movement, therefore there's no trend. 
Finally, our bottom graph, a decreasing trend. Okay, it looks the opposite of the increasing, clearly, right? Because we have this little jump up initially, and then it just plummets down. Okay, the behavior is decreasing, right? Therefore, our trend is decreasing. Okay, second thing, variability. Okay, this is going to let you know how consistent is the data. Okay, how stable is this data, right? Um, is it all over the place? Is it very unpredictable? Okay, or is it is it very very consistent? Is it very predictable? So you're going to have high variability and low variability, right? Now you can say you know it's it's moderately high, it's moderately low, but in general, okay, you're going to refer to it as high and low to keep it simple as an RBT. All right. So what are you really looking at? Because sometimes visual analysis, right, can be tricky. If you were to just look at these two graphs, okay, they look pretty similar, right? But you have to look at the entire picture, okay? If they're going to give it to you like this, you need to look at the whole thing. You have to look at the numbers as well. So on our top graph, okay, where is our data start? It starts at five. What's the highest point it gets to? The highest point it gets to is nine. The lowest point is one, okay? So the distance between the lowest and highest data point is eight. That's pretty significant when your data is only on a 10 point scale. Okay. So it's pretty much been at the lowest and it's been at the highest. Okay. That, that data is bouncing around everywhere. It is very, very variable. Okay. It's high variability. Let's look at our bottom graph. Okay. What is our lowest data point? A two. What is our highest? A four. Okay. So Data is pretty stable, right? It's either between a two and a four, okay? Not, not too much happening um, in terms of change, okay? Um, you know, average would be around three, right? So per session, anywhere from two to four, okay? Small range, the distance between that low and data, high data point is two in our bottom graph compared to eight in our top graph, okay? So if you can't tell from just a visual analysis, right? look at the distance between your low and your high data point, okay? Now, typically on the exam, it'll be pretty clear and pretty straightforward, okay? Um, as far as your data path goes, and that's what these li this line is, right? Your data path. If that data path is jumping all over the place, okay? Well, it's gonna be pretty clear. It's high variability, right? So uh, keep that in mind, right? What you're really looking at is the distance between that low and high data point, but typically you'll be able to tell just through visual analysis. Okay, reading a graph again, level. Okay, what is level? Level is our third component we're gonna look at, okay? And typically we're gonna use level um, when we're looking at two different uh, phases, okay? So if we're going from a baseline to an intervention, right? Um, what is our change in level, okay? Level is simply, what is the data in relation to the y-axis, okay? So in this instance, all right, our high level, okay, sits around uh, nine to 10 um, instances of streaming per session, okay? So in this graph, this is a high level, right? Um, the frequency or the rate, whatever you're measuring is high, okay? Moderate level, okay, the data sits between, you know, five and six, okay? So it's somewhere in the middle between zero and 10, right? It's right in the middle. It's kind of moderate. The behavior is just happening at a moderate. Uh, level. And then a low level, okay, anywhere from one to three. Okay, so you're looking in relation to this y-axis, where does our data fall? Okay, is it really low on that y-axis? Okay, is it somewhere in the middle or is it high? Is it way high on that y-axis? Okay. Okay, calculating percentages. Um, super easy. All right, people uh, ask this question all the time. How do I calculate percentages? When you're calculating a percentage in ABA, okay, you're taking the, I have correct responses written here, but I mean, you could always do incorrect responses if you wanted to, right? But typically you're looking for um, the percentage correct because we're, we're trying to achieve typically um, for skill acquisition, a mastery, okay? So you can see this graph is a skill acquisition graph for identical matching, okay? Our Tuesday session, all right? 
we ran seven trials. Okay, you can see this on our x axis, right? Seven opportunities. Okay, our behavior was matching, right? The zero represents incorrect, the one represents correct. So, how do I find the total percentage correct for that day? All I do, okay, is I take my total number of opportunities and then I look at how many did they get right. I divide the responses by the opportunities and I get my percentage, okay? So we have five responses, seven opportunities. That gives us 71%. And that's all percentage is, right? So you're looking at responses versus opportunities, okay? And it really depends on, um, are you looking for correct responses, okay? Are you looking at percentage of time behavior happens during, during the day, okay? Whatever it might be, right? You're just looking at responses divided by opportunities. Again, when you're doing skill acquisition, you're typically looking for some sort of mastery, okay? Typically around 80 or 90%, okay? So you want to know how many you got correct out of how many opportunities, okay? So we can see here for identical matching, five responses were correct out of seven total opportunities, which equals 71% correct. Okay, so responses divided by opportunities. All right, two quick questions. Uh, I want you to answer this. What is trend level and variability of this graph? Okay, so visually, what do you see? What is our trend? Is the behavior increase, or is the, the trend line, in, is the data path, excuse me, increasing, decreasing, or staying the same? Well, first, okay, slight decrease. And then it kind of picks up again, right? But it's still staying around the same area, okay? It's not clear if we're, our behavior is decreasing or increasing, okay? When it's not clear, okay, the trend is stable, right? There is no trend. There's no increasing, no decreasing trend. What is our level, okay? Is it high, is it moderate, or is it low? Now, again, you could say, you know, moderate to high, right? Low to moderate, okay? But typically, okay, it's gonna be very clear. And in this graph, I would say our level is high, right? You know, the lowest data point is seven, okay? But we're really typically around eight to 10, okay? So compared to other possible uh, opportunities or answers on this graph for level, okay? I would say this level is high. And that's the, the thing about visual analysis, right? It is somewhat subjective, okay? That's what makes it tricky for people, okay? So if you're really confused, you got to just use all the resources that, you're, that are available to you, okay? And then you need to give your best answer, okay? Because um, visual analysis can be tricky in that aspect, okay? But I think, right, if we took an average of this line, okay, and we got about, you know, eight or so, that's to me a high level. So if you're looking for a level and you're confused, take the average, okay? And then determine it. So level here, so no trend, high level. How's our variability? Okay, our lowest data point is what? Seven, highest is 10. Not much variability, pretty, pretty consistent, pretty stable, okay? So I would consider this graph, no trend, high level, no variability. And then again, what type of graph is this? What is the most common graph we use in ABA? Um, is it a bar graph, a scatter plot, histogram, or a line graph? Well, it is a line graph. It's the most common form of graph in ABA. Okay, that's all there is to it. Honestly, graphing, not difficult. Reading a graph, not difficult, okay? Visual analysis is subjective. It can be subjective, okay? But the idea of reading that graph is not hard, okay? The best way to practice is look at a bunch of graphs, okay? And just start picking out what is the trend, what is the level? What is the variability? Okay, what do I see? Okay, and in percentages, super easy. Okay, number of responses versus number of over or divided by number of opportunities. Okay, all right, keep studying hard. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Um, we have study materials available. Um, any questions, reach out. I'm here to help. Uh, I've got more videos coming this week. Um, other than that, keep studying hard um, and see you soon.